So welcome everyone to our Sunday evening service for Cops Road Chapel. Uh, it's good to be together again and welcome to you all, uh, whether you're regular members or whether you're joining us, uh, particularly those uh, listening later on YouTube, welcome if you're not a regular. And uh, Sukesh, our pastor, is going to lead us this evening and be speaking to us later. So I'm going to hand over to him now. Yes, good evening and welcome to our evening service. It's lovely to see you all. Uh, if you are a regular, you're a member of the church, we of course warmly welcome you. And we trust and pray that this evening as we worship our Lord together, that this will be a time of real blessing for you. And I pray, especially if you are a visitor, perhaps a bit later, watching on YouTube, then we welcome you. We are Cops Road Chapel. We're an evangelical church in Clevedon. Uh, do please visit our website to learn more about us. And there are sermons there as well. And we pray that as you join us and listen to what we have to say, that the Lord will bless you. The theme for our evening service is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to be thinking much about him uh, this evening, particularly if you're not a Christian. I trust and I pray that what you hear this evening will be of great help and of great blessing to you. We're going to begin with prayer. Let's pray together. Our God and our Father, we thank you for this opportunity we have this evening to meet, that we might, Lord, sing praises to your name, that we might express our love for you. And our Father, this is our great desire. We come, Lord, this evening because really we only have one desire, and that is to express our love to you. And our Father, we thank you that you have given us love for you, that you have placed in our hearts a love for you. And that love, our Father, I admit, is very imperfect, it's very inadequate, it's very weak, it's very fickle. But Lord, we love you. We come this evening because we do love you. And our desire is that we should love you more. We should know more of you, uh, that we should understand more of your lovely character, that we might love you even more. So, our Father, we pray as we gather this evening that your blessing might rest upon us. And we pray that you would reveal more and more of yourself through the Lord Jesus by the Spirit that we might truly love you more. So bless our gathering, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn speaks about God's love for us, how deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond measure that he should give his only Son.
to have a couple of readings from the Bible in our service. Uh, This is something we do in every service we read from the Bible. And the reason we do that is because everything that we believe comes from the Bible. And all that we seek to do is in obedience to the Bible, which is God's word. The first reading this evening comes from the Old Testament book of Isaiah and chapter 55, and we're going to look at verses 1 to 11, and uh, Mike Bryant is going to uh, read this passage for us. Sorry, I haven't got that one on the, um, on the PowerPoint. I've only got the other one. Right. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Come. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me, hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. And behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, You shall call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that did not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel. 
for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the high and heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not be turned to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. So reads God's word. Amen. Thank you, Mike. Uh, that passage, uh, as I say, it comes from the Old Testament, the first part of the Bible from the book of Isaiah. It was a passage written about 600 years before Jesus came to this earth. And it is actually <coughs> words that God speaks to all of us. And it's words of invitation. God says to us, come to me that you may receive good things. Well, a little later in our service, we're going to look at some words that Jesus spoke, where he also invites us to come to him that we might receive blessings from him. We're going to sing again, and this time we're going to sing a song called, In Christ Alone My Hope Is Found. Thank you. 
We're going to come to God in prayer now. Let's pray together. Our God and our Father, we do thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, our Father, for the truth of those words, in Christ alone, my hope is found. We thank you, our Father, that he is the Lord of glory. We thank you that he is our creator, our God, we thank you, our Father, that he is the Savior of the world. We thank you, Lord, that he came to this world with that one purpose, to show the love of God to a lost world. We thank you, our Father, that he came to this earth full of grace, full of mercy, full of love. And we thank you, our Father, for his life here on earth, lived perfectly in total obedience to you. We thank you, our Father, for his death on the cross of Calvary. And we thank you, our Father, that it is there that salvation is found, in his work, on our behalf, on the cross. We thank you, our Father, that when he died, our sins were laid upon him. We thank you, Lord, that he paid a full penalty, a total penalty, cleared our guilt, cleared our debt, and removed the anger of God that was upon us. We thank you, our Father, that he satisfied the law of God and therefore brought salvation to his people. We thank you, our Father, that he is the risen Savior. We do not worship one who is dead in the grave, but we worship one who has been raised to life and today sits at your right hand interceding for your people. We thank you, Lord, that he is building his church. We thank you for the message of the gospel. We thank you that we have a message for a lost world, that God is love, and God in love has provided Jesus Christ, and God in love invites all to come to him, and God in love will receive all who will come to him, and God in love will forgive all for the sake of Christ, all who will come to him. And our Father, we pray for those who are believers this evening, that as again we hear the old, old story, we pray, Lord, that it will be a fresh story. We pray that it will come to us with fresh power. We pray that your Spirit, O God, will speak to us from your word. We pray, O Lord, that we will see new depths in the love of Christ for us, in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, our Father, that we will love him more. We pray, Lord, that we will have a, a determination to serve him more and to be like him, Lord. How lacking we are in love and grace and brotherly kindness. Lord, grant us that we will be like Jesus in all our ways. Grant, Lord, that we will have love for you and love for your people and the best interests of your people at heart. 
We pray, Lord, for this church and ask for your blessing upon Copse Road Chapel, upon every member of the church. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to be those who speak of Christ and who make Christ known. We pray, Lord, that there would be nothing in our manner, there would be nothing in the way that we live that will bring dishonor to your name. But we pray, O oh God, that all that we do and say will speak of Christ and display the grace of Christ and the love of Christ. We pray, our Father, for our nation. We thank you, Lord, that you have been so gracious, so merciful to this nation. And Lord, we pray that you'd continue to be gracious to us. Lord, we are still in this lockdown, and Lord, we fear another spike in this virus. We pray, O oh God, that you would protect us. We pray for our government, that you would give those who rule over us wisdom, Lord, in how best to manage affairs during this time with the economy as it is and the virus as it is. Lord, please grant them much wisdom, we pray, that they might know guidance from God. We pray for your church, Lord, that we as your church would continue our walk with you. We know things aren't easy, particularly as we feel ourselves isolated. But Lord, we pray for extra measures of grace, extra measures of patience. And we pray, Lord, that this would be a time when we learn more of prayer, more of Bible reading, and walk with you, that we might honor you. Bless our service this evening, Lord, we pray. Be with us as we sing songs of praise to you, and especially as we come to hear your word. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, before we come to look at the word of God, we're going to sing a hymn that says, I hear thy welcome voice that calls me, Lord, to you for cleansing in your presence. So this is a, a psalm or a hymn rather that reminds us that Jesus is calling us, inviting us to himself.
I want to speak this evening on a few verses from the Bible. Uh, they are some of the most precious verses that are recorded in the scriptures. And Christians often turn to these verses and they are right to do so. And uh, if, those, uh, the, the, if you are not a Christian this evening, you also need uh, to think about these verses. They are addressed to Christians. They are addressed to non-Christians. And they are lovely verses that I trust will speak to your heart this evening. These are words that the Lord Jesus himself spoke. And they are found in the Gospel of Matthew and chapter 11. The Gospel of Matthew and chapter 11. And uh, this uh, is what Jesus said. This is right at the end of Matthew chapter 11 from verse 28 to verse 30. Matthew 11 verses 28 to 30. And this is what Jesus said. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I'm sorry, I rather rushed into that reading. I hadn't realized they were going to come up on the screen, but there they are on the screen, these lovely words that Jesus spoke. On these uh, Sunday evenings, uh, I'm doing a series of sermons called, What is the Gospel? We as Christians preach a message from the Bible that we call the gospel. And the word gospel means good news. In other words, we as Christians are saying we preach something called good news. Well, what is this good news that we have? I think whatever, whoever you are, whether you're a Christian or not a Christian, you want to hear good news this evening. I mean, life in the world is pretty tough anyway, but with the uh, virus and the lockdown and all the pressures that there are on our economy, all the anxieties that there are in the world, I expect you want to hear some good news. What is this good news? Well, a couple of weeks ago, we began this series, and uh, I was looking at a text which spoke about the love of God, and I was making the statement the good news is that God is love. And then last week we were looking at that wonderful story of the lost son, and I was making the, the point then that the good news is this, that God in Christ receives all who will come to him, even the worst of sinners, the people who have lived the worst life. I don't know much about you. You may be visiting our website. You may be listening on disc. And I really don't know much about you. But you may have lived a terrible life. And you might even be thinking to yourself this evening, well, it's too late for me. I've actually heard of someone who says these things very recently. I haven't heard them myself, but I've heard it reported to me that there are people who are thinking this. Well, I would like to be a Christian but it's too late for me. And I'm not sure why people should think like that, but that is apparently how some people think. And I'm bringing to you this good news. It never is too late. And we were looking at this last week, how this young man who'd gone away into the far country and wasted his inheritance and then came back and the father ran and the father welcomed him and the father received him back as his son and poured blessings upon him. This beautiful picture of how God the Father receives sinners when they come to him, embraces them, loves them, makes them his children, and pours blessings upon them. And this evening, we're looking at these words that Jesus spoke, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What is the good news? 
Well, the good news is a person. The good news is Jesus Christ. It isn't some kind of statement. It isn't some kind of slogan. You know how organizations have a slogan. Uh, and in that slogan, they hope to get across a certain message. Uh, you know, there is a brand of footwear, and they say, just do it. That's become their slogan, just do it. And it's a, it's a kind of a slogan intended to uh, encourage us to become active and therefore to buy their product. It's not just shoe wear, footwear, it's clothing, sports clothing, and so on. And they're saying, well, look, if you go out and do it, first buy our gear and do it wearing our gear. So there are these slogans. Well, the good news that we preach isn't a slogan. I'm not here to uh, give you some feel-good message. I'm not here to give you some advice and say to you, now if you do this and do this and do this, then your life will improve and you will have happiness in your life and you will have fun and pleasure in your life. That's not why I'm here. I'm here to talk to you about a person. I'm here to talk to you about Jesus Christ. He is the good news. In the Bible, we read about a servant of God called the Apostle Paul. And when the Apostle Paul entered a certain Greek city called Corinth, he was determined to do one thing. He was determined to preach Christ and him crucified. And he said to these people, he said, I have determined to come with nothing else. And he said to them, I know that you Greeks, you have philosophy. And you have philosophers who come to your city, and they come with their slogans and with their teaching. But he says, I've come to you with a person. So this evening, I want to tell you this. The good news that we as Christians speak of is Jesus Christ. It is in the person of Christ that all the good news that the world could ever need to know or wish to know is found. It is in Christ. If you're a Christian this evening, you have every reason to rejoice because you have Jesus Christ and you are in Jesus Christ. And he is your savior. He is your salvation. He is your hope. And one day you will meet him. And that day will be full of joy. It's the one day we look forward to, that one day we will be with Christ and our lives will be full of joy. So if you're a Christian this evening, you're a Christian because Jesus has saved you, and you are in him, and you're going to be with him. And if you aren't a Christian, and you're listening to me on YouTube, on disc, however you're listening to me, I want to say this to you, that the most precious person the world has ever known is the Lord Jesus. The most wonderful, the most loving person this world has ever seen is Jesus Christ. And I want to commend him to you this evening. I want to speak of him this evening, that you may come to him. You may take up his invitation and come to him and be saved through faith in him. I want to do two things this evening. I want to speak to you about Christ, who Jesus Christ is, the person of Christ. And then I want to speak to you about the invitation of Christ, the person of Christ, and the invitation of Christ. Now, the passage that I read, Jesus gives an, a description of himself. And these words that he uses to describe himself are some of the most precious words in the whole Bible. They're actually not found anywhere else. This is the only place in the Bible where Jesus describes himself or others describe Jesus like this. These are not found anywhere else. And this is what he says. I'm looking at verse 29, and he says there, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, or humble of heart. For I am gentle and humble of heart. 
That is how he describes himself. He speaks to people who are very needy. And he invites them to himself. And in a moment, we'll be looking at that invitation. But you know, when he, you invite some, somebody to yourself, you at least need to explain to them why they must come. And this is the explanation Jesus gives. Jesus says to them, you must come to me because of who I am. And then he uses these words, I am gentle and humble in heart. When you read the Bible, you read about Christ. This is a very, very interesting book, the Bible. It's a big book. If you've never read the Bible, it looks intimidating. It's quite a big book. It's got hundreds of pages in it. And uh, there's a, an enormous amount of information in it. It can be very technical. Uh, there's poetry, there's history, there's letters. It's all kinds of literature in this book. But the fascinating thing about it is that it is essentially about one person. You know how sometimes you go into a bookshop and there is the biographical section. And I find history books magnetic. Uh, when I walk into Waterstones, uh, if I have a book token, sometimes people very kindly give me a book token. My children will, because they know I love reading, they'll give me a book token. And I'll go into Waterstones because I love looking at books. And uh, there are two sections that immediately draw my attention. You may find this rather odd, but there are two sections that immediately draw my attention, cycling and history. Cycling, because I love going on my bike on holidays, and I go to the cycling section to see if there are any books on cycling holidays in Europe or somewhere like that, and I find those interesting. But I don't spend much time there. I just have a quick look. But then I go to the history section, and my children, if they're with me, will know if they want to find dad in the bookshop, go to the history section. And there are these biographies, and you pick out a biography of Churchill or um, Nelson or somebody like that. And, you know, the whole book is about their life and all their various victories and so on. Well, here is a biography. That's one way of looking at this book, the Bible. This is a biography. It is a biography of Jesus Christ. This whole book is about the person of Christ and the works of Christ. It's like if you were to pick up a biography of Churchill, you would read about his birth, you would read about his parents, you would read about the kind of life he had as a boy and what he did at Eton and so on. And then you would read about his works. You'd read about how he was in the cabinet in the 20s and how he fell out with the government and how he became prime minister during the war and so on. All these various works of Mr. Churchill. And in many ways, the Bible is a little bit like that. Of course, it is very different, but there are ways in which it is like that. It speaks about Jesus Christ. And this book describes the person of Jesus Christ. And this is why it is such a valuable book, because it is a description of the greatest person who has ever lived on the face of this earth. It is a description of the finest man who ever walked on the face of this earth. Now, there's no exaggeration there. I know when we say, oh, such and such was the greatest footballer ever, and so and so was the greatest batsman ever, and the greatest bowler, and the greatest all-rounder. Well, of course, these things are a matter of opinion. But really, when you come to know the Lord Jesus, and all who have ever come to know him. And there are billions, not millions, but billions who have come to know Jesus. They all hold exactly the same opinion. He is the greatest person who has ever lived, the finest person ever to have walked on the face of this earth. And the Bible has a description of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have some words in here that we've just read. And there are various other passages that speak about him. And everything that you read about Jesus show you 
how wonderful, how appealing, how lovely he is. Perhaps you know Christians, and perhaps the Christians you know always speak about Christ. They're always going on about Christ. And you wonder, well, why do they always go on about Christ? Because he's so lovely. You know, that is the truth. Because he's so wonderful. We love him with all our hearts. And we wish we could love him more. You speak to a Christian, and you say to a Christian, what is your greatest desire? What is it, if there's one thing in the world that you could have, what is it that you, you, you would have? Now, the answer will astonish you, but the answer is this. I wish I could love Jesus more. I'm not being pious. I'm not being super religious or super spiritual or anything like that. I'm not that sort of person. But I'm just an ordinary Christian. I'm like any other Christian here on earth. But that is the one desire we have. I wish I could love Jesus more. I wish I could give more of myself to him. I wish I could know more of him and see more of his loveliness so that I would love him more. I wish I could serve him more. I wish I could use more of my gifts for him. I wish I didn't have this sin that is there in my heart and mind that's always getting in the way and is always tempering with my desires and my efforts to love him because I want to love him and I want to love him more. I'm being utterly sincere. I'm being utterly sincere when I say this. This is the great desire of every Christian that we wish we could love Jesus more and more. You know, when the Bible speaks about Jesus, the Bible speaks about his love. And the Bible says that he was full of love. The Bible says that his heart was filled with love. The Bible says that his heart was overflowing with love. The Bible says that everything that he did was done out of love. He came to this world because he loved his father and he loved sinners and he walked among them because he loved them and he taught them because he loved them and he healed them because he loved them. And even when he spoke what might appear at first sight to be harsh words, it's because he loved them. There are words in the Bible that Jesus spoke. And when we first read them, we recoil and we think, they sound very harsh words. But it's because he loved those to whom he was speaking. And they were in error. They were in serious error. And a person who is filled with love, if he sees somebody in a serious error, well, of course, they're going to speak sharply. And of course, they're going to do all they can to draw this person's attention to his error. There were people who were totally mis mixed up about their religion. There were people who thought that by their good works, they will earn the favor of God and win their way to heaven. That's a huge error. That's a kind of error that lands people in hell for eternity. I wonder if you're like that this evening and you think to yourself, well, if I do good works, I live a good life, I go to church, I read my Bible, I say my prayers, God will see that I'm a good person and God will give me a reward and I will enter heaven. Do you know that is a de deadly error? It's a fatal error. You're believing lies because heaven isn't by our own works. Heaven isn't by our own efforts. It is through faith alone, in Jesus alone. Now, if I didn't tell you that, would I really be a loving person? And so Jesus spoke the truth, and he spoke the truth in love. He was full of love. The Bible tells us he was full of grace, and grace means he loved those who were the worst of sinners, who didn't deserve his love. You must never make the mistake that you can earn God's love. We can't. 
God's love is freely given, graciously given. And the Bible has this wonderful phrase when it speaks about Jesus. It says, he came full of grace. Lovely phrase. He came full of grace. His heart was filled with grace. And he came to do good to those who deserved judgment. He came to bring salvation to those who deserved condemnation. He came to bring heaven to those who deserved hell. He came to bring blessing to those who deserved punishment. This is grace, you see. Grace means God doesn't deal with us as our sins deserve, as we deserve. Grace means God gives us blessings when we actually deserve to be punished and judged. And Jesus came full of grace, full of love. And then we have this passage where Jesus says about himself, I am gentle and I am humble of heart. In other words, Jesus is full of kindness. He's full of compassion. He's full of mercy. Have you ever had dealings with people who are full of kindness and full of compassion? Not harsh, not hard-hearted, not demanding, critical, judgmental always running you down, always demanding more, and always having a go. You know, there are people like that. But you come across people, and they are very, very gentle and very compassionate, very merciful. And they would never have a go at anybody. They wouldn't start criticizing people, and they wouldn't start demanding this and demanding that, but full of gentleness, full of compassion, full of mercy. That is Jesus. If you're a Christian here this evening, you have every reason to rejoice in your Lord. You have every reason to sing praises to your Lord. You have every reason to come to Jesus in your hour of need and to expect from him compassion and mercy because he's a gentle, gracious Savior. You know, the most astonishing thing in the world for us as Christians is that people don't come to Christ. Now, I do understand why. It's because people have misunderstood who Jesus is. But once you've come to know him, you marvel and think, why doesn't the whole world come to him? He's such a wonderful person. He's so full of grace. He's so full of kindness. He's so full of compassion. Why doesn't everybody run to him? Because the world needs grace and kindness and compassion. And Jesus gives it. So we have a description of Christ. Now, I can't go on and on about this. I could, but of course, I have to watch the time. I don't want to spend ages. But I just want to give you this taster about the Lord Jesus. He is full of love, full of grace, full of mercy, full of kindness, full of compassion. He is gentle and humble of heart. He relates to people. You know, when he was here on earth, he related to the worst of sinners. He didn't live in some palace or in some uh, priestly dwelling, away from the people, remote from them. He walked the streets, and he related to the worst of sinners, and he entered into conversation with them. He would eat with them, and he would speak to them, because he was humble, and he was gentle, and he is humble and gentle. So we have the description of Jesus, and this is why he is good news. He is the one we commend to all, and we say, come and know him and love him, and receive him, and follow him. He is kind, compassionate, gracious, and merciful. So, the description of Jesus. And then secondly, from this passage, the invitation of Jesus. The invitation of Jesus. Come to me, all who labor 
and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If you're a Christian this evening, these words are for you as well. You mustn't think these are only for unbelievers. This is evangelistic and only for non-Christians. They don't apply to me. They were actually spoken to his disciples as well. And Jesus said to them, are you weary? Are you heavy laden? Do you find yourself stressed? Do you find yourself anxious? Do you find yourself finding the trials of life difficult? Do you find yourself burdened by the trials of life? Do you find yourself burdened by lockdown? Do you find lockdown is difficult because you are isolated and there is a lot on your shoulders and there are loads of duties on your shoulders that you have to do and all these pressures are upon you and you find yourself stressed? Well, that happens. It happens to all of us. I don't think lockdown has been easy upon any of us. I think we've all found this an enormous struggle. Well, here are Jesus' words to his people. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And it's a wonderful thing for us as Christians to come to Christ. It's a wonderful thing to say to him, Lord, I feel the stresses and the anxieties of life. I feel the anxiety of family life difficult. Lockdown has been difficult. I feel the, uh, the, the economic burdens difficult. I'm at work and I'm finding stresses at work. Perhaps your job is uncertain. Or perhaps the, your economic future is uncertain. You're not sure where it's all going to go. And you find yourself stressed. Well, that's understandable. And I say to you, come to him and pour your heart out to him. Pray to him and ask him to strengthen you. He is a wonderful support, encouragement, and help to his people. There are lovely words in the Bible that Jesus spoke to his disciples before he died and then rose again and went into heaven. And he spoke to them about the Holy Spirit. And he said to them, when I go, I won't leave you as orphans but I will send the Spirit. And he said, the Spirit is your supporter. He is your encourager. He is your provider. Because God always supports and helps and encourages his people. God never leaves his people to themselves, but God is always with his people. And God is there to support them in the worst of crises. I sometimes wonder if we go through unnecessary trials because we don't pray enough and trust him. And he invites us to come and he says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This is the invitation to Christ. Come to him in prayer and ask him to strengthen you and support you in your anxieties. But if you're not a Christian, and you're listening to me, perhaps this evening, perhaps later on YouTube, on disc, I want to remind you of these wonderful words that Jesus spoke. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And these words speak about your sin. Now, I know sin is an unfashionable word. I know it's a, a word that we don't use very often. And people immediately say, well, it's only religious fanatics who use the word sin. Well, actually, sin is a relevant word. You may not use it. You may not think about it. You may think it's old-fashioned. I want to tell you it is a relevant word because sin is our biggest problem. This is why we're in the mess that we are in. This is why the world is in the mess that it is in. It is sin. It is because we have gone away from God. It is because we have broken his law. It is because we are in rebellion against him and we have disobeyed him and we have been separated from him. Sin is our biggest problem. We need to know about sin. If you know nothing about sin, you need to know about sin. It's rather like a person going to the doctor and presenting some uh, symptoms. Remember at one time, uh, we were living in Africa, and I remember this well, I had a headache for three days, and that's all I knew about it. I had a headache. 
my wife was a doctor and I went to her after, the, I don't know why I didn't speak to her before, but after three days of a headache, I went to her and I said, I've got this headache and I've had it for three days and it seems to be getting worse. Well, to me, it was just a headache. What's the big deal of it? And I thought, keep taking paracetamol, it'll go. My wife, being a doctor, immediately said, that's probably typhoid, you know. And it was typhoid. It was killing me. So you see, I needed to know about this. I knew nothing about typhoid. I had needed to know about this because it was a problem I had. And you may know nothing about sin. And you say, well, sin is an old-fashioned word. It isn't. It is your condition if you're not a Christian. It's relevant to you. You need to know about it. And sin is disobedience to God. Sin is rebellion against God. And sin is saying to God, I don't want to obey you. And Christ says to all who are in sin, who are in rebellion, Christ says, come. Come to me, he says. And I will deal with your sin. And I will deal with your rebellion. And I will deal with all the consequences of your sin. Because that is what he does. The reason Jesus came is to save us from our sin, to save us from the penalty of sin. The reason why Jesus died on the cross of Calvary is to remove our sin, is to pay the penalty for sin and to remove our guilt and to deal with God's anger that rests upon us. And the reason Jesus rose again from the dead is because he had offered a perfect sacrifice on behalf of our sin. And the reason today Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father is because he's inviting all who are in their sin that they might come to him and find a cure. You have a problem if you're not a Christian, and your problem is sin. Whether you recognize it or not, you have a problem. It is sin. And there is one solution to your sin. It is Christ, his death on the cross, and his resurrection. And you must come to him, because if you do not come to him, your sin will remain. And the consequences of your sin will remain. If I had kept quiet about my headache, and I would have just been heroic, and I thought, well, I'll just keep taking paracetamol, and perhaps I'll sleep a bit longer, and my headache will go. I would have died of typhoid. The typhoid is a killer. And it was actually beginning to increase in my body when we actually had a blood test. My wife was alarmed and she said, three days you've had this headache. Why didn't you do something about it? And God in Christ speaks to us. And God in Christ says to us, you have a problem. It is sin. Why not do something about it? Why remain in your sin? It is having a devastating effect upon your life, and it will bring judgment upon you. Why not come to Christ? Why not ask him to remove your sin? Why not ask him to forgive you, to cleanse you in his blood, to remove your guilt, to bring you into the kingdom of God, to make you a child of God? Do you know that is what he's offering you today? He is offering you forgiveness. He is offering to remove all your guilt. He is offering to save you from your sin. He is offering to bring you into God's kingdom. He is offering to make you a child of God, adopted into God's family, blessed of God, and guaranteed a place in heaven. This is what Jesus is inviting you to. So if you're a Christian here this evening, well, praise God that you have Christ and you have the forgiveness of your sins and you have salvation in Christ. Praise God. The love of God is upon you. And God in love continues to bless you and continues to transform you into the image of Christ. Praise God. If you aren't a Christian, I offer you Jesus Christ. And I plead with you, come to him. Don't remain in your sin. Come to him. He's inviting you. And he's offering you salvation. He's offering you forgiveness. He's offering to bring you out of your sin into the kingdom of God so that you become a child of God and are guaranteed heaven. Come to him today and you will be saved through his death on the cross. Amen.
Let's come to him in prayer. Let's pray together. Our Father, we do thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that he is full of love and full of mercy. We thank you that he invites us. We pray, Lord, for any hearing this broadcast who are not saved. Lord, will you grant them salvation? Will you draw them to yourself and grant them the forgiveness of sins through Christ? In his name we pray. Amen. Our final hymn is a hymn called Just As I Am, Without One Plea, But That Thy Blood Was Shed For Me. If you're not a Christian, you might want to use this hymn as your prayer and ask God to save you. Amen.
we're going to pray. Our Father, we thank you again for our Lord Jesus, for his love and for his grace. And we pray, O oh God, that we might indeed come to him just as we are and find relief and find grace and find forgiveness. Be with us, Lord, this evening. Be with us the rest of this week. Watch over us, we pray, and bless us. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.